That's quite an image, isn't it? Well, check this out. Across India, Africa, and parts of Southeast Asia, elephants are attacking. They're destroying villages and crops, killing people and each other. In fact, during the early 90s, there were a number of cases of elephants raping and killing rhinoceros. Also, near Bangladesh, elephants killed 300 people between 2000 and 2004. And it's not just happening in the wild. Elephants in captivity can be violent as well. So what is going on? Well, researchers are looking into it, and they say that people are moving into elephant territory, disrupting their way of life, and some experts think that elephants are in fact suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder and hence lashing out. But there's one place that's trying to help. It's called the Elephant Sanctuary in Hohenwald, Tennessee. 27,000 square acres where sick, old, and sometimes violent elephants can live in peace. The primary thing the Elephant Sanctuary is trying to do with the elephants, uh, with the new elephants that arrive, is give them security. Give them space, give them freedom, give them a place to be an elephant. You know, they're all captured from the wild. They've all endured abuse from the onset, whether that be abuse just in, in during the capturing process or abuse during training or just everyday living conditions. The biggest thing we see with, with just about all of them is they don't really trust yet. Uh, they don't know who they can trust. They don't know if this is real. They don't know how long it's gonna be, how long it's gonna last. Well, elephants are highly intelligent and actually quite complicated, though, uh, once you get to know them and understand their society, um, they're simple to understand, but they themselves are very complicated. They're self-aware so that they, they know that they exist outside of the group, uh, so that they are a member of the group. If there's a situation where elephants are so stressed that they feel that they have to be aggressive, then it, it plays out much like people. It can play out where it's uh, passive aggressive, where it, it where they're um, taking their aggression out on not on the object that they're concerned about, but on something else, displaced aggression. People have been looking into post-traumatic stress disorder only the last couple of years in non-human species, and now that they're looking into it, they're finding examples of it that are directly um, that directly coincide with what they see with humans. Relapses of a trauma, they have gone through something that experience or something that triggers a response that is completely out of the ordinary for that individual. Last summer we had an incredibly tragic incident where Winky actually turned on Joanna and killed her. Um, it happened within a matter of seconds. We didn't see anything that out of the ordinary at that moment. Winky has always been one that you can read just by walking up to her. She uh, lets you know very clearly where she's at emotionally, just the look on her face, her posture. I mean, it happens that fast with Winky. She is so connected with what's going on around her and so connected with what's going on in our minds, um, it's almost frightening sometimes. Uh, one of those experiences was following Joanne's passing. One time I just, you know, was in a low place and just struggling a little bit with that loss and went over to Winky and just hugged her leg and said, you know, I really miss Joanna. And um, it immediately just sent Winky into a down place. She was, you know, two minutes, seconds earlier, she was talking, she was happy, and I just went over and hugged her leg just like I would a friend, just saying, man, it's really tough. And boy, she felt that response. She took it as that responsibility aspect of it, and this was her fault. But she re was grieving also, mm -hmm. uh, grieving not only for the loss of Joanna, but also for her actions, and uh, really taking the responsibility for what she had done. And I mean, just the emotions that they exhibit are so intense, and they're so connected to what's going on around them. You do become very close to these animals. You know, they are phenomenal. They are, you know, you really can't put that, what they provide to us, I don't know that you can put it into words. You know, that depth of relationship that you develop with them is, is almost beyond what you develop with a human. Again, I think it's because of the heightened level of emotion and, and social awareness that they have. But I think over time, you know, people are recognizing that animals, whether it be companion animals, domestics, exotics, they're realizing the complexities that we've never given animals credit for. Um, it's always been, these are human traits, these are human emotions, and nothing else can experience them on the level that we can. And, Maybe they're right. Maybe they're experiencing more than we can. <laughs>